After what may be the most exciting football game in history, we have to talk about the AFC Championship game, how it's coming along, and what the history of it is that's so unique to this team. We also have news on Tyron Matthew, a number of injuries, how it pertains to this week, and then we have to start taking a look at the Bengals, how they adapt to what we saw just a few weeks ago. Matt Derrick from ChiefsDigest.com is here to help us. We're going to get into it. Welcome all to Locked On Chiefs. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs Podcast. Welcome back, Chiefs Kingdom and all you new listeners. Uh, We are brought to you today by OnlineGambling.com. We thank them for their participation. They give you tips and tricks all through the gambling process, through the NFL playoffs. Check them out. And today, we appreciate you making us your first listen. There's lots of, of things that you can be listening to out there, and we appreciate you taking the time to get with us. He's Matt Derrick from ChiefsDigest.com, beat reporter for the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm Ryan Tracy. I found a rogue analytics. We do the draft work. We do the Chiefs work. We kind of do everything around here. And tomorrow you'll hear from Chris as we get ready for that Bengals game. But Matt, in the process of going through this, is this, in your opinion, where does this rank in the – best games of all time as we saw it go down to the 13 second thing is it really up there in like the greatest games in history no it's definitely up there i mean one the fact that one it's got a name i mean i think i think it's generally getting called 13 right. seconds we'll see okay. i mean i know kansas city will probably go down as the grim reaper game i mean there's some different options but um certainly around the the league and around the nation i think 13 seconds seems to be the the moniker for this one and when you get a name you got a big game um i mean this this is going to be up there i mean when you're talking about the catch you're talking about the music city miracle the minnesota miracle the immaculate reception 13 seconds is going to be right there um as far as far as i've gone i mean as far as you know games i've seen and everything like that i mean yeah 54 51 chiefs rams fits in there um the afc championship Mm -hmm. game against the patriots fits Mm -hmm. in there i mean similar type ending although this one was even crazier um, I, I, but I, I mean, honestly, I mean, to me, it's just that this was a slugfest both ways. I mean, both teams just punched from the very beginning. I mean, this wasn't like the AFC championship game where the Patriots ran out to a huge halftime lead and the Chiefs make a miracle comeback. Um, that Rams game, both teams had big leads. So on point, this was, this was a two possession game for 10 seconds <laughs> and that's it. I mean, 10 seconds and the, the bills got right back in and one play 75 yards. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is this is going to go down as one of those one of the best games in league history just because of just the the the, the quality of the play, the tightness of the game and and the, what was at stake. Yeah. And and in that wake, as good as it was as much as we enjoy that, I agree with you it's going to be forever in history. That's a huge emotional lift that you get from that win and now you have to turn your tail and start pointing another direction at another opponent that just beat you recently, that you have to face in the AFC Championship game, one that is going to be held in Arrowhead. And another thing that probably hasn't got enough coverage, certainly for me this week, is about the fact that this string of AFC Championships for this team, in all of its variations through the rosters, is historic as well. And maybe we're a little jaded in Kansas City because we have expectations to be in these games pretty consistently for this roster. But when you take a step back, what does that streak mean for just getting to the AFC Championship game? Well, I think, I mean, Chiefs said it all. I mean, we talked about it first thing on the pod the other night after the game. Uh, Chiefs scoreboard after the game when I'm almost completely empty still had the message up there. <laughs> history being made, four straight championships at Arrowhead. Making four straight games is historic enough. I mean, that's not done, been done very often. Andy mm-hmm. Reid's one of those guys that had done it before. He's now done it again. He's the only coach that's ever done it twice with two different teams. I mean, that just tells you you got a, you got a Hall of Fame coach, which Andy Reid is definitely a Hall of Fame coach. Mm-hmm. Um, Patrick's got a little work. But he's going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback. I mean, you put all of this together, and I mean, the 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 crazy thing about it is that you're in the middle of it. It's not over. I mean, could this be the end? No. I mean, Chiefs are going to keep setting some records and everything. They might go to a fifth. They could keep this whole thing going. But I think it's important you you do focus on the next thing, which is that you can't if you're the Chiefs and the players and the coaches and the staff, you can't you can't get into that. You can't get into the hype. 
you can't get into the, the fear of that because you're coming off an emotional game. Um, you know, Andy gave the, the players a little bit of a respite on Monday, gave them a late check in time to kind of recover since it was a late game and emotionally draining. He wanted them to have a good night, night's rest coming in to prep for this week. So you got to put that behind you. If you're the Chiefs, you can't be living in, you know, if they're getting questions about it this week, the best answer is just to be Bill Belichickian on the Cincinnati mm. because you can't live, you can't re, keep reliving Sunday, Sunday night. No, you can't. You, you got to take it for what's worth. Let it boost you. I also think that there's a whole lot of hubbub here about, you know, that they lucked into this, that there's, you know, number one seeds have gone down a couple times in this process, but you can only play the games that you can play. And if you happen to have a worse record at the end of the regular season than someone who gets the first seed, that's not on you. You have to tackle and take out the team that's in front of you. Whatever happens with the Titans, the fact that you have been, what is this? This is two AFC championships played in Arrowhead while they were starting as the second seed, correct? That's my recollection, yes. And you look over on the NFC, and you got a team hosting a NFC championship game that was a four seed. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, Chiefs are best team left, best team left standing for a reason. I mean, because I think that proves that they're a really good team. Um, they've taken some shots and Buffalo gave them one heck of a shot this week. And you know what? Good teams survive that. And it says a lot about this team. But once again, you know, it's that you can't you can't relive the glory. I mean, you've got to focus on the big picture in front of them. And what's the big picture in front of them? It's a third straight Super Bowl bit. And that's really what it comes down to. They have to have all their players to get there. We're going to talk about one they should have back coming up here in just a second. Make sure that you check out Peacock and Williamson at Super Bowl week. You guys aren't going to want to miss that. You can find that feed on any of the other free spots to get your podcast, just like you get this one. Hey, Chiefs fans, we're all looking for an edge. And today, OnlineGambling.com is sponsoring the show. We thank them for that. If you don't know who they are, they're dedicated to giving betters just like you the edge throughout the playoffs and even on through the rest of the season with the best NFL tips, news, and more to make you as informed as you possibly can be. At the beginning of the playoffs, they asked me to give them my predictions, pick my finalists for the Super Bowl, etc. Well, Chiefs are still in it. Uh, unfortunately, the other team that I picked, Green Bay Packers, is not, so going to have to change that up. Who do I think is going to do it right now? I have to lean towards the Rams. I'm going to change that pick because, you know, you have to keep rolling because they're giving you an extra opportunity to go in and change it over, and you can do whatever you want to change your picks. Now, if you're planning on betting here in the remainder of the playoffs, you got to head over to OnlineGambling.com before you do because they give you the edge by providing all the, the trusted experience and all the tips that you need all day, every day. And that includes their OG tips section where you can find their Super Bowl picks as they would do it and the inside track on how to beat the odds throughout the NFL playoffs. That's uh, visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL the latest gambling news, tips, and odds to give you the edge through these playoffs and the Super Bowl. Remember, onlinegambling.com slash NFL to make the most of this year's playoff run. A lot of hubbub. Winning that game against the Buffalo Bills, barn burner, all the offensive explosion, et cetera. I can't help but think that maybe it doesn't come down to that if Tyron Matthew does not get injured in that ball game. First, what do you think was his impact had he been there? Do you think that it is that close? Well, there's a couple of things, and one of them is that, um, you know, the, the Bills certainly took advantage in a couple of times of where there was some miscommunication in the backfield, and that's a, and you know why, and and even that that buff the the fourth touchdown by Gabriel Davis, I mean, there was definitely some miscommunication and confusion in that secondary, might be a spot where Tyron Matthews says, okay, we got three timeouts here, we don't need all three of them for the offense. You definitely want to make sure you had two, as it turned out, <laughs> um, two was pretty critical. But you had a third timeout there. You could, you know, I, I think there's a reasonable chance that Tyra Matthew calls timeout there if that confusion pops up. Maybe you don't give up that touchdown. Um, you know, there was also another breakdown where Monty Watts looked like he broke on a football, made a just kind of committed a little bit too early, missed the play on the back end. Tyron probably doesn't do that. Or if he's if he's not in that position, someone else is, and it's not Armani Watts because he's not on the field because Matthew's there. Um, not knocking on Armani, but that's just the difference between, you know, a pro bow, all pro type of guy that Tyron Matthew is and anybody else um, that's out there. There was a couple of other miscommunications. You know, hey, you know, does does Matthew fix everything? No. I mean, they probably still give up some of those plays because 
Mike Hughes had enough a rough night. I'm not sure there's anything that Tyron Matthew does to, to save that. Um, but there's no doubt. I mean, there was a couple of those touchdowns that it was just a, a, a tick here that they were off. And whether that was something pre-snap, whether that's guys are in a different position if Tyron's there, could have been different. But because I'm with you, I mean, I still think the Buffalo has a great night um, if Tyron plays. But you know what? One touchdown was the difference between this being a comfortable Chiefs win and what you got. Right. Exactly. Going forward, we find out today that we should see Tyron Matthew this weekend. We should see Rashad Fenton. We'll talk about him in a second. But getting him back, does that automatically smooth out some of the wrinkles that we saw be problems the other night? Or is that still on them? Because I have a tendency to think just his presence bolsters that secondary unit in terms of their own confidence and understanding and attacking where they're supposed to be. No, I don't think there's any doubt that, I mean, just having him on the field, I think gives you a little bit of confidence, but you know, it's also the communication. I mean, you know, and some of the, the, uh, during the second half, you had Nick Bolton who was out there as the mic uh, without Anthony Hitchens on the field. And Hey, is, is it a little bit easier to communicate and get everybody in the right places? If Tyron Matthews out there? Yeah. I mean, that makes Nick Bolton's job as a rookie a little bit easier. So I don't think there's any doubt that there's just little, just tight, you know, turns here and there that tighten everything up a little bit that I, I think absolutely make that defense a little bit different. I mean, it's not a, not saying Tyra Matthews is a savior, not putting that on him or anything like that, but that was the kind of game where an inch or two here or there made a huge difference. And you know what? Tyra Matthew good for an inch or two during a game. Yeah. I mean, and especially the way it's not like you knew you weren't going to have him. It was losing your captain in the first, what, four minutes of the ball game or something like that, that I think has a shock effect as well. And so I think that they're going to live it up. I think Tyron's probably focused on these next two games because there is a contract issue coming. And I think that got a little more complex. We got news today as well. Uh, I, ha I haven't seen it confirmed to this point, but it looks like Ryan Poles will be going to become the Bears general manager, one of the first people to be looted from this chief staff since the Super Bowl year. And it, that leaves the negotiation on Brett Veach's shoulders. A, how do you think that uh, Poles is set to do in a situation like Chicago? And what does that do for the front office in terms of the, the Matthew contract? Yeah, I think it, I mean, it's, I think it's a great situation for Ryan Poles. I think it's a great hire by the Bears. Um, he's been a, a really, you know, stabilizing force in that Chiefs organization. It has really risen up through the ranks very quickly. Certainly fits the model. I mean, you know what NFL teams are looking for now are these, these young up and comers in their 30s. Um, and, and and polls, I mean, he's not that far removed from being a player himself, you know. I mean, he's, he still knows how it is a little bit, uh, but at the same time, he's learned a lot from John Dorsey, a lot from Brett Veach, a lot from Andy Reid. Um, Chiefs are one of the best in the league when it comes to managing the salary cap, scouting, you name it. So he, he's going to be taking a lot of great lessons learned in the Kansas City. I think that's a great place for him. I was surprised that the Bears were willing to go back to the the kind of Chiefs route after it didn't work out with Matt Nagy. Sometimes teams will be, you know what, we don't want to just go back to that tree again. And it probably would hurt holes in, in that organization and the idea of maybe bringing somebody in that he's got ties with in Kansas City as coach, because I think that's even a little bit more of a difficult conversation. It's going to be tough to sell Bears fans on someone else from the Kansas City tree as a coach after after Matt didn't work out there. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I, I, I think he's going to be a, a great fit there. Um, the Chiefs are are well situated to you know keep moving and not let you know losing polls be a big deal. I mean, uh, Mike Borgonzi has been the number two to Brett Veach. Um, still there, I'm still stunned that Mike Borgonzi hasn't gotten more heat um, because remember, I mean, he's he's ba it was basically you know co everything with Brett Veach. I mean, those two were kind of side by side, and honestly, it could have gone either way. I mean, in a different scenario, maybe maybe Mike Borgonzi got gets the GM job in 17. He interviewed with it along with Brett Veach, so they were definitely two of the finalists. Um, kind of surprised that he hasn't gotten more attention around the league for that. But between him and you've still got Chris Shea, uh, you've got oh my gosh, I, I mean Mike Bradway still involved there. You got Brant Tillis. I mean, so many of the guys that manage the contracts, manage the salary cap, do the 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 pro personnel part of the game, they're there. So. This, this franchise, this front office, they're not going to miss a beat when it comes to getting deals done. And and remember, some of those guys we're talking about were, were big players in getting the, the 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 Mahomes deal done and the Chris Jones deals done. So, yeah, I mean, a loss, but Chiefs have got a stacked organization as it is behind them.
Yeah, that's how I feel too. I don't think this affects the Tyron Matthew contract at all. I think if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's not related to this. But on a side note, Tyron, I think, ups the level of the secondary completely, but should get Ty, uh, Rashad Fenton back as well. And I think that is an upgrade. Like you said earlier about Mike Hughes, had a rough day out. That happens. He's had really good games as well. But I think Fenton's been more of the physical presence, and I think he's been a steadier player overall. Does this help their secondary overall going uh, and looking towards the Bengals? Yeah, getting Fenton back would be huge. I mean, uh, you know, with the back injury, the next couple of days are going to be pretty critical. Um, Chiefs want to get him back out on, on Wednesday, and then they want to see how he does back-to-back days on Thursday. That's, you know, it's still not a slam dunk that he's going to play on Sunday. Chiefs are very optimistic that he will, but they want to see, you know, make sure that he can handle back-to-back days and that there's a progression there. So definitely keep your fingers crossed, but it's looking in the right direction for him. And, and you hit it on the on the head right there. I mean, um, Rashawn Fenton's been incredibly, I think, underrated for this team as a, as a, a cornerback and essentially a nickel type back. I mean, even though you know he's going to be mostly on the outside and it's it's Snead kicking on the inside when they do go to that nickel package, um, he's been very reliable. And especially now with the last couple of weeks, he's versatile too because what the Chiefs have been doing increasingly here at the end of the season and certainly in the postseason has been putting Traveris Ward on the biggest guy on the other team. And he did it again against Stefan Diggs, held him down. I mean, that was one of the reasons why it was such a big challenge for for Mike Hughes because he was kind of stuck on Gabriel Davis all night long regardless and just had a bad night. Um, Rashad Fenton's probably a better matchup in a situation like that. And when you're coming up against the Bengals, who've got three great targets across that you're going to be lining up against, yeah, Fenton being back is going to be key. And if they So if they get him back and – you know why? I mean, even though Ward had some tough moments against Chase, would not be surprised if Ward stuck on Chase, just like he's done the last couple of weeks. And if that's the case, then you know, hey, Fenton's going to be dragging. He's going to be he's going to be pulling a tough matchup too. I, I think they're all going to be tough, and I think we need to sink our teeth into him here in a second. Hey, everybody, got to get back with you about this incredible app that you've heard me talk about before. Get Upside. This is how they save you money. All you have to do is sign up. For the GetUpside app, you can get in the App Store or the Google Play Store right now and use our code TOUCHDOWN. Then you get $0.25 back on every gallon of gas after you fill up that you track with this application. You don't have to pay full price at the pump anymore. You get a cash back with GetUpside. Download the app. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. $0.25 on everything comes to you. And if you drive a lot, you have a chance to make a lot of cash back. Then you can pay yourself at any time to any bank account, PayPal, e-gift card, Amazon, whatever you like. Just download the Get Upside app from any store that you like. Use the code TOUCHDOWN, and you get $0.25 cents for every gallon every time that you use this application. If that's the code, TOUCHDOWN, at the app, Get Upside. It's New Year, and my New Year's resolution is probably a lot like yours, that I need to get fitter, I need to get healthier, and this is going to help me do it because these – are gold when it comes to it. These Built Bars are the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. You've heard us and seen them before because they're just so good. They taste great. They provide you the macronutrients that you need, and they help you live a healthier life. And that's important for me, as well as a number of other of you. And the nice kicker is that they contain real chocolate. So you get a bit of what you're looking for as well. 150 to 130 calories on here, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein on average. For these bars that taste like candy, all you have to do is check them out, stash them in the pantry, stash them around your house, go clean out those. You don't have to live with something that tastes chemically or anything like that. They're great flavor, great taste, all in one package. And right now, even if you want to get in there and you don't like coconut almond, which I love, if you don't like peanut butter brownie, which I love, salted caramel and all the other flavors, they're all there so that you can check them out at built.com and see everything new that they have. All you have to do is go to built.com and use our promo code LOCK15. You'll get 15% off of your order. That's LOCKED15 promo code for 15% off at Built.com. So let's get into X's and O's. You mentioned it last segment about Traverius Ward drawing the, the prime time player. So if you just had to go with your gut right now, does that continue that they try to go back to that matchup with Ward on chase predominantly through this next ballgame? Yeah, to me, it's going to be really, really interesting because there's a chance that, and I'm not even saying it's an overreaction, but I, I think the inclination would be that after you see a guy that has a game like Jamar Chase did against this team just a couple of weeks ago, I mean, 11 catches, 263 yards, 
three touchdowns, even better day than Gabe Davis just had for the Bills against you. Um, there's, I think, going to be the, the over natural pot- potential to overreact and say, not only are we going to put Javaris on him, we're going to bracket him with the safety and just make sure you're blanketing Jamar Chase. And maybe the Chiefs need to do that. But as we, we mentioned in the last segment, they've got targets all over the place. I mean, you can't necessarily just say that you're going to double team one guy and leave everybody else in single coverage because T. Higgins can make plays. You know, Teacher Boy can make plays. I mean, there are players out there that can beat you. So you can't just give all your attention to one guy. But Chase is, if there's their one, if you're going to do that, Chase is the guy to do it to. Um, I, I mean, I, th- I think there's a, a lot of, you know, benefits the chiefs having played the Bengals so recently is that one Bengals have no secrets they've given away all their tricks you've seen the best that the Bengals have you know what they're capable of you know their speed you know their style of play how physical that they get how the vertical game you know all of that that the Bengals have nothing's going to surprise the chiefs and i and i think that the definitely the the Bengals speed and physicality surprised the chiefs last time around mm-hmm. that's not going to happen this time so i think between that um, maybe picking up some lessons from well, how Tennessee got after Joey Burrow on Saturday night, nine times getting him down. I mean, those are certainly some things I think Steve Spagnuolo is going to be picking up. And if and if the Chiefs don't have a radically different turnaround and performance against the Bengals offense this time, I'll be very surprised. I, I hope that they can pull that off. I am a bit concerned because, like you said, Spagnuolo should be picking on that up. He's seen them bulk of what they're going to do. I'm sure there's going to be a trick play there that they haven't seen, but they know the players that they're going against at this point. They are at home. My concern is nine sacks, and he still pulled off a win. The Chiefs have not been productive at any point this season in that kind of contact with the quarterback. So how else can they either create pressure or, more importantly, in my opinion, create confusion for a guy who is still a young player at this level and buy themselves some time against those big matchups, particularly on the outside against Chase and Higgins? Yeah, to me, you know, you you saw the the Titans go about it a different approach than what the Chiefs did. Um, the Chiefs, you know, and Steve Spagnuolo kind of relied on you know his usual mo, which is you know bringing some blitzes. Um, obviously, brought so a, a blitz at a, a very inopportune time that the Bengals beat. Um, that's not what the Titans did. I mean, Titans Titans went about it a different way. They went about it coverage wise. Was like force force Burrow to hold the ball a little bit because that line can't block. It's not a matter of like the Buffalo line, you know, it's going to give Josh Allen, you know, all day long to, to find the guy if he needs to. Uh, that there's no scenario where that that Cincinnati line, if they want to double, if they want to double team Chris Jones, great, because they have nobody that can beat Melvin Ingram and Frank Clark one on one for three and a half seconds. Um, that's just it. I mean, I, I think that you know the the approach the Chiefs went about last time going after Burrow and attacking that line. It didn't work because if Burrow just chucks the ball up to Jamar Chase, he's got a 50-50 chance or better than that of a completion, and he's and he's willing to do that. And those two have enough of a connection that it's not that much of a risk. So I, I would imagine the Chiefs go about it in a, a much different way. Honestly, probably a little bit similar to what you saw them do against Josh Allen, which is you know just go after with four. Um, mm-hmm. Try to maintain your lanes, keep the pressure on, because against Buffalo, what you're trying to do is mm-hmm. you're trying to keep Josh Allen in the pocket and just make sure that he can't escape. With with Burrow, what you're trying to do is just co- just cover long enough, and four people can get home. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to worry about it. It's not it's not about just making some heat or you know cl- keeping lanes you know clear or anything like that. Is just you c- make Joe Burrow think long enough, and he's going to hold on to the ball too long. And if he sees blitzes, he's going to chuck it up. But if he if he's given time to throw, he's shown that he will take that time. And he doesn't have that time because the line can't block. I, I hope that that's the way that it works out. I, I expect along those lines to see a lot of dime looks. So much so that I think the coaching staff's attitude is probably likely like mine. If we play dime and we take away, even if we have to play cover three with guys deep, just specifically to counteract what we saw last time, they're going to take their chances letting Mixon run on them and see what they can get that way. Is that sound to you? I, I think so. I mean, that's absolutely what you're probably going to dare them to do. And, you know, and if you, if that means that – and I think the Chiefs are well-situated to do that because I, I think if you – whether it's Willie Gay or it's Nick Bolton or out there or the two of them together in, in some of those dime looks, I mean, I think absolutely 
that they can they can defend. I mean, I don't think there's any problem whatsoever with with that situation. And I think that they, they can still even stop because I, I, once again, I mean, that that line, not only does it not protect Joe Burrow well, it doesn't necessarily open up the greatest running lanes either. So, yeah, I mean, to me, I think it's absolutely don't don't dare Joe Burrow to beat you because he will dare Joe Mixon to beat you because the Bengals aren't built to win that way. And if they have to try and win that way, I mean, what's the difference between the, the Chiefs and the Titans if you get into a game like the Titans and the, and the Bengals were the other night? Chiefs have an offense. Yeah. I mean, you 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 hold what, – what, what? looking at it here, 19 points. 19, 19 points is not going to be enough to win this game for the Bengals. No. Not even close. No. I will tell you one last note on defense. The other thing that I liked, I thought Willie Gay played a pretty good game after a tumultuous week thanks to his – off field issues it seems that that's cleared up and in the past and not going to be anything that holds over the question was when they they peppered in a few blitzes it was Willie Gay instead of the defensive backs and I think that's something that if they find themselves where they want to change it up maybe they want to do a replacement blitz or something like that I like the idea of sending him through those a, a gaps to really get in Burrow's face and hope that then forcing him to chuck it up might actually lead to some turnovers does that sound or do you think they should just lay back no, I, I, I think the, the well-timed, you know, bringing the fifth guy is probably the way to go. Um, the problem is that, you know, the Chiefs had last time around was that when you bring more than that, you know, you bring a six or seven guys. And that's when Burrow just, you know, he know he knows his line can't block. And he knows that if he sees her six or seven guys coming, all he just needs to do is chuck it up and see if somebody will go catch it. And where he can be beaten is when maybe it's four or five that are coming and he's like, I can hold on to this ball for three and a half seconds. And it's just a quarter second too long. Let's hope that it works out that way. I think also the, the fact that Tyron Matthews should be there allows them to be more versatile, cover things up. Let's hope that they don't get too squirrely with what they're trying to do. I think this is going to be another game that's tighter than most Chiefs fans want it to be. Um, very confident team coming back. But at this point, do you think that this is a less than seven point game? I mean, I know seven points is the spread, and I initially thought that's, you know, maybe a little bit too high because the Bengals are playing pretty well. Um, but at the same time, I mean, I, I keep looking back at that last game, and I'm thinking I, I think the Chiefs were the better team um, on the field that day. I mean, yeah, the Bengals made some right plays at the right time, and, and the Chiefs committed some penalties that I don't think are going to get called penalties in January. There are penalties in December, but probably not in January. Um, and if that's the case, and if the Chiefs are allowed to get a little bit more physical with these receivers and, and get away with it, I think they're absolutely going to try and take that opportunity, you know, jam jam these receivers up the line, play physical with them through the play. I mean, that's, I think, how you are the only way you're going to keep these guys in check. Um, but you know what? More and more I think about it, maybe seven points is about right. I still think the Bengals could cover, but I think the Chiefs by six is kind of what I'm looking for right now. Well, hopefully that's the way that it turns out. We're going to have to watch. You can check everything out that Matt is doing at ChiefsDigest.com. I hope that you guys do that. It's been a great week, and I know that it's hard to shift gears, get ready for another game when you're coming off of that one, but we appreciate you guys doing it. If you check out Locked on Bets, you'll get more information if you're going to lay some action on this coming game or the other championship game. I'm looking very forward to it. Chris is going to be back tomorrow, and Matt, we'll have you post game to go over what happens in this next ball game. I will try to maintain my... Uh, commitment to being down the line and not get crazy excited. I think this is going to be a good result. I'm looking forward to it. Whatever we do on Sunday, we will be talking about history being made one way or another. Right? Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, folks, get ready. We'll be with you for post game. Hope that you had a good day. Thank you for listening to us today. Make sure you check us out tomorrow because we're here five days a week. We'll talk to you next time.